Welcome back to Project 2 Arrow and the Yamaha 998 Turbo Powered Rans S21 build. As you all know, I'm experimenting with an electronic water pump to replace the stock mechanical pump on this engine, since I kind of feel like it's a major weak point for long term reliability. The pump I've chosen has ruffled feathers, but hang in there, it'll be okay, I promise. Like anything else, there are pros and cons to every choice made while setting something like this up. Yes, my water pump will now be dependent upon electrical power, but so is the engine, so I kind of see that as a mute point. With a sufficiently sized battery, or batteries, plenty of time will be granted for a safe landing. The pros to something like this are that the water flow is no longer tied to engine RPMs that allows for control over cooling at low power settings like taxiing or idling on the ground. Additionally, since I'm running a water-cooled turbo, I can cool the turbo after shutdown and that gives me a longer turbo life. As always, I'm not advocating that you follow me in any of this, and for all I know it could turn out to not work, and resulting in me retreating to a more stock setup. Only time will tell. I've temporarily set up my engine with clear tubing, utilizing some flow meter wheels to monitor the flow, as well as the ball valve that simulates the thermostat. I don't really intend on running a thermostat unless the minimum flow of my pump prevents reasonable engine warm-up times, and I won't know that until I get things started, but I wanted to know what a thermostat would do to the flow of things just in case I needed it later. I purposely have a pump well exceeding the expected flow rates needed, and the goal is to nail down what cooling I do need, and that'll help determine the final pump choice later on. I'll monitor amp draw and note the pulse width modulation signal that it needs to maintain the desired temps so that when I build the map for managing coolant temp with the temp sensor, I can have a baseline guesstimation. For the first few runs, that pump will be controlled by the potentiometer seen in this video for that very purpose. Initially, I had a second line from the expansion tank to the other radiator tank, but it was causing some issues allowing air into the system since that's the swirl pot side of the tank. I'll be teeing that line into the other one you see here just to give the air a path back to the tank at a later date. I've kind of just let the video of me playing with this roll in the background as I talk, so I apologize if it doesn't really line up with what I'm saying at the time. Overall, I'm pretty pleased with how well this worked out, and I feel like I can go ahead with scrounging up the parts needed to get a system I can actually run the engine with. I was able to bleed the system fairly easily, and no matter what speed I pump the water through, no air is introduced into the system, so I consider that a win. You all know I like to think out loud and give you my thought process as I go, so here's my take on what I've designed so far. I started with searching for a header tank that would fit my needs, and I found this one from Radium Engineering. As I mentioned, it's a dual chamber designed to influence a swirl of the incoming fluid and aid in evacuating the air. With that in place, I found the largest radiator that would fit in the spot that I had set aside for it. For me, it was an all-aluminum unit designed for a Honda Civic. I modified it, removing the pressure cap, and flipped it over on its side. I have AN6 ports at the top of each end tank, allowing for an air path back to the header tank, giving me a self-bleeding system in the event that air does find its way at some point. Cooling system design is somewhat of an art, and while you can take educated guesses, in the end it comes down to just trying it and modifying it to get the desired result. Things like core thickness, airflow, pressure differential across that core, water pressure, water temp, and the list goes on and on. All of those things have contributing factor that will affect the efficiency of cooling. I feel like this is a good start to a pretty solid setup. I do have plans to run a heater core for the cabin heat, but I didn't want that complexity in the initial setup just to make it easier on me. I will be running a bypass valve so I don't have a hot core inside the cabin when I don't want the heat. And you'll see all that later as I progress. So let's talk a bit about how I have all this routed. Starting with the heart of the system, the pump, it's down at the lowest point, just off the cold side of the radiator. From there it routes up to the water pump housing built into the Skytrax box that we looked at last time. It enters the passageways in the engine but also is branched off into three additional loops. The first one comes off the top of the impeller housing up to the main water output line leaving the head. I believe this is mainly an air escape path, but I'm not exactly sure. I'll be leaving it in place since it won't hurt anything to be there. 
The second small line is the line that I mentioned in the last video that is somewhat optional. The gearbox comes with a plug in this hole on the side, but I'm gonna leave that loop in place. So I replaced that with some fittings that I found locally, and these aren't permanent, and I have ordered the correct barb fitting for this spot. It's routed up through the throttle bodies and then also tees into the output line from the head. The third offshoot goes back to the old water heat exchanger and onto the turbo. If you remember, we removed that heat exchanger, so in my case it goes straight to the turbo. And this loop to the turbo flows all the time. It isn't restricted by the thermostat if you have one. Leaving the turbo, it's up to the header tank. And this is where I'll add that heater core later, but for now I'm just going to leave it out. And from that header tank, it goes back to the radiator. The main coolant output from the engine is routed straight to the radiator, and if you're running one, that thermostat would go as close to the head in that line as possible. And that's pretty much it. A fairly simple, self-bleeding setup. I may still need to add a small recovery tank off the header tank if the airhead volume isn't enough to deal with the pressure increase as this system warms up, but I want to try it without it for now. I've put a lot of time into researching cooling systems, but I'll be the first to admit that I'm no expert at this, so if you have your doubts or have some suggestions, let me know in the comments below. I appreciate you watching, and stay tuned for the next video.